Hello my dear students and welcome to this week overview. During this week, we will be talking about diffraction, which is one of the behavioral waves. So what factors affect the amount of diffraction of a wave? So technically by definition, diffraction is the bending of a wave as it moves around an obstacle or passes through a narrow opening. A wave diffracts more if its wavelength is large compared to the size of an opening or an obstacle. So, water waves spread out as they pass through a narrow opening. The pattern produced is very similar to the circular ripples you see when a pebble is tossed into a pond. Diffraction also occurs when waves bend around an obstacle. The larger the wavelength is compared to the size of the opening or obstacle, the more the wave diffracts. This picture right here, this picture A, shows that this wave diffracts or spreads out after it passes through a narrow opening as you can see. So, and then diffraction also occurs when a wave encounters an obstacle. So the waves are moving normally until they have or so an obstacle right here. Then we have another behavior of waves, which is interference. So what are two types of interference? Interference occurs when two or more waves overlap and combine together. There are two types of interference, which are constructive interference and destructive interference. So by definition, a constructive interference occurs when two or more waves combine to produce a wave with a larger displacement. A destructive interference occurs when two or more waves combine to produce a wave with a smaller displacement. So, as the figure right here shows, I have a constructive interference. So this is my first wave, and this is my second wave. And as you can see here, once those two waves are combined together, the amplitude increase. So two waves with equal frequencies travel in opposite direction. When a crest meets a crest, the result is a wave with an increased amplitude. Okay, and this is also here for the troughs. So those are the crests and those are the troughs. Meanwhile, a destructive interference that I have here, this is my first wave and this is my second wave. So you can see that those have opposite direction so it, it's like a crest meeting a trough okay so that will reduce the amplitude so two waves with equal frequencies travel in opposite direction when a crest meets a trough the result is a wave with a reduced amplitude and then we have the standing waves what wavelength will produce a standing wave a standing wave is a wave that appears to stay in one place, it does not seem to move through the medium. A standing wave forms only if half a wavelength or amplitude of half a wavelength fits exactly into the length of a vibrating point. 